Before we begin, remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this with anyone who you think needs to hear this message. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can click the join button, become a member, and get access for free to the exercise performance course where I teach you to squat, bench, deadlift, shoulder press, do pull-ups, and dips. Not only that, but you will also get the audiobook of the book of Puck, narrated by me, and also the exclusive podcast for members, The Coffee Cast, where we do weekly Q&As. Now that we've had that out of the way, let's begin. Good afternoon, or morning, probably morning for you guys. For me, it's afternoon. I'm going to be a bit slower today, as you saw with Red Evening. I caught a stomach bug. Uh, It's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. Four days in a row. Four days in a row. So let's be straight up honest here. This will not be the highest of energy ones. But we're going to pull through. If I really can't manage, I'm going to end it. And we're going to do part two of this post. Now, what is this post? Last Rule Zero, John Fitzgerald. Brian mentioned the first red pill post ever. And I was like, huh? But he mentioned Hawaiian Libertarian by his other name, which I didn't know. I'm like, huh? And then, thanks to a Twitter user called Un- Unpussified, I found it. He linked it to me. It's like, hey, you asked on uh, Rule Zero who that was. Here he is. I'm like, oh, Hawaiian Libertarian. Nice. So I was like, you know what? I've been going through my ranting and raving about TRP losing its message. Why not discuss the first ever post? This is me introducing you to some history. And we'll do my best. Narrate it probably. We've got a new guy over here, Mook Saksa. Mook Saksa. What, what's that song? I still got that feeling. You know the song, Deep Inside of Me. <laughs> but glad you're here, sir. We got John Watts, and of course, we got Bear and the T Rex RB assembling. Um, let's dive right into it. I'm going to put myself here. Hawaiian Libertarian, I put the post in the chat. Exactly. He knows. He knows. Uh, the link is in the chat. If you want to support the channel, become a member, get my version of the Book of Book audiobook for free. Get the exercise performance course for free. If you want to do a super chat, I do those at the end of the show. Maybe in between, depending on how the post goes, but mostly at the end. Not new, just usually wants the replays because it's nighttime in Aussie land. Oi! Down under! Good to see you, man. We're going global here. Awesome. How's things in uh, Aussie land? How are things? Barry Nitsawa came from Aussie. And um, was Red Introvert as well? Sterling, of course. There's a, we've got a community there. Everything is trying to kill you. Hard bastards. Without further ado, Hawaiian Libertarian game is Red Pill. <clears throat> now, that it appears the debate between PUA, MGTOW, MRA, blogosphere about game and its relevance and morality has cooled down a bit, I would like to reiterate the one point I believe is most relevant for why all men should take an effort to understand game without trying to marginalize it or write it off. It's completely Uranus. Uranus, sorry. It's completely Uranus. Simply because you object to the morality espoused by the PUA, or that you think game is a silly, manipulative script that men follow simply to get laid. To use the Matrix allegory, game is the red pill. Something happens which makes us question those very rituals we've blindly followed, and we are confronted with a choice. Shall we take the blue pill and choose to ignore any inconsistencies with our own paradigm, which works pretty well, 
Or shall we take the red pill and explore these inconsistencies, knowing it could lead us into a world we aren't familiar with? One that questions the very foundation of our current perspective. In this context, I think it's perfectly fitting to describe the social engineering by cultural indoctrination and conditioning that has been affected for the last century regarding gender roles and attitudes towards institutions like the patriarchal nuclear family, the confusion engendered by the battle of the sexes, and the legal system of sexual social politics is all really best described as a mass delusion, an epidemic of blue pill addiction. Symptoms of blue pill delusions are ubiquitous and it manifests itself all over the place. Only the few red pill takers, those that understand the reality of gender relations, are even aware of just how widespread the mass delusion of distorted gender roles is inculcated into mainstream consciousness. And this is where game comes in. Game is the red pill because it is based on men analyzing what behaviors are attracted to women and what behaviors are not. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you praxeology. Whoa! Can I get some fire in my chat? It is the basis for just about all social dynamics amongst any human interaction. Why men compete with other men for access to women. Why women compete for the attention and affection of men they perceive as desirable to other women. Game is the red pill because it deals with understanding the principles of observ... Ob Sorry. Game is the red pill because it deals with understanding the principles observable truths that are field tested and these truths are direct are in direct contradiction to the blue pill delusions of preconceived notions regarding gender roles in our brave new world order when was this written that would be interesting 2009 oh mr libertarian you ain't seen nothing yet once we learn of that new paradigm, we can no longer hold the old belief as our truth. Not everyone can deal with this kind of thinking. Many people are perfectly content believing something to be as they've always known it to be and reject this newer attempt at truth because it's too painful to accept. They've been living their entire life based on this lie and only now they come to discover that the world is not what they thought it was. Unlike the caricature portrayed by its detractors, game is not a simple ruse, a routine or a shtick to manipulate or trick women to having sex with men. No, it's about truly understanding social dynamics and the role that social hierarchy plays in any human interaction. Once you have this understanding, you begin to see the matrix or false reality of delusions regarding gender relations. I thought of this as I read the comment section of Dr. Helen's blog post that I cited in my last post on relationship dynamics. So many men weighed in with their comments, unknowingly revealing the depths of their blue pill instilled delusions that contributed to their failures in their relationships. Here are a few quotes that demonstrate this blue pill effect. And whenever your woman asks which of two paint colors you prefer, you have to say you don't care. The alternative is surely picking the wrong color and paying dearly for it. This is blue pill induced paranoia. Fear of paying dearly for upsetting a woman. Anyone that even has a rudimentary understanding of game knows exactly what to do should a woman ask a man to pick a color. My ex-wife used to love to put me into impossible verbal situations. Such as, do you think that supermodel is prettier than me? Wrong answer, number one. You don't think I'm pretty? Wrong answer, number two. No, liar. I, so I found myself avoiding talking to her at all. Taking the blue pill renders many men utterly clueless to the shit tests and failing these shit tests. 
are relationship destroyers. Here are a few comments showing the blue pill addict mindset. I do think, however, that women manipulate more. They cry, they feign over anger or hurt, they tell you stupid things like a man doing the dishes is sexy, or I'll be happy if you, and if you refuse, you don't want her to be happy. Of course, women lie too. Unless, of course, you really believe she had a headache for a solid six months or is somehow turned on by a man pushing a vacuum. I'm a good guy. I don't cheat or go places. I shouldn't or do things. I shouldn't or drink too much or any of that stuff. I have nothing to hide from my wife, but I have learned the hard way that if I tell my wife the, wife, the truth about certain things, especially my feelings, if they... If they're at all negative, then I better be prepared for two or three weeks of significant pain. Helen is right. I want to be a truthful person with my wife, but it's, it just isn't worth the hassle, especially since she made it so clear that she really doesn't want to hear the truth. No offense, but sometimes women are just playing crazy. Okay, hold on, guys. <sighs> Are you beginning to see the common thread here? How the blue pill mindset has left so many men so clueless about how to deal with their wives and or girlfriends. All of these preceding examples are men who are afraid of their wife's emotional state. For the majority of husbands, they married a woman who they could communicate with and formed an alliance. Her attitude became far less tolerant and hostile after. There are many reasons for this that I won't go into here. To rethink his attitude may invite a firestorm into his home. To rethink his allegiance will cost him dearly. He'll lose his children and quite possibly pay huge bucks for his wife to move somewhere else in. Your advice would be great if the laws were not so biased in favor of women. Men have much to lose and little to gain by standing their ground. Women have much to gain and little to lose by villainizing their husbands and divorcing him. I think we're going to do this in two-parter. I get this impression that there exists a commonly held notion amongst MRA that ever since feminists got no-fault divorce legislation, all women have taken to it with grand gusto, simply because they can, that the laws give women gold-digging powers and they take advantage of it simply because it appeals to women's greed. And they will happily destroy the lives of their husbands and children to state, to, to sate that lust for greed. I beg to differ. There's much more to it than that. Check the chat real quick. Nay, nay. No, no. C is here. Moth No is here. Yep. Entertaining the time machine. Roman King, hello, good to see you, sir. Also a new guy. I haven't seen him before. Uh, Sloth. Hello, hello, hello. Of course. Hello. <laughs> Fancy meeting you here. You tend to come here often, don't you? <laughs> I know. I know. Let me focus on work, okay? <laughs> Let's see. Where was I? Uh, get this impression. Oh yeah, okay. I beg to differ, blah, blah, blah. Because if a married man stands up for himself in today's climate, he could very well find himself put out of his own house, paying over a, sorry, paying over a substantial chunk of his paycheck to his ex-wife and seeing the kids when and if she decides that. This is what I call the emasculation paradox. Sir, have you ever heard of emancipation proclamation? I'm sorry, I don't listen to hip hop. That's a reference for people who know. Many men today seem to think that the legal system is set up to give all the women the power in marriage. So they'd better see to her to avoid upsetting her so that she doesn't take you into divorce court hell. But the paradox is that a man who understands the reality also understands that standing up for himself 
is the only way his wife can respect him, admire, lust, and love him. In my humble opinion, it's lust, admire, and oh, that's a good one. Love, and then respect. <sighs> Depends on your definition of respect, I guess. But lust is number one. And then she gets to know you. And then it's kind of admire. Then it gets... Uh, I'll figure it out. Lust is one. You really shouldn't worry about upsetting her. She's a woman. Exactly. I mean, I've said this before. Like, she, like, what height is the average woman? I mean, come on. And what's the average weight? And no, most of that is not muscle. But come on, boys. Come on. Remember what Ryan said during... Was that during Rule Zero or Red Morning? Where it's like, the best thing you can do is just shut the fuck... And there goes the monetization. Shut the hell up. Let her rant. Let her rave. She'll do her own digging. As most people will do. Go read Strategies of War. That book is so underrated. And I have it in hardcover. If anyone were to ask me, like, what are your favorite possessions other than... <laughs> It's, oh, hey, Kate, good to see you. Hello. So my favorite possessions, other than, uh, it would have to be, like, my hardcover books of Robert Greene. I have 48 Laws, Art of Seduction, Strategies of War, and Mastery, Mastery, all in hardcover, all of them. Don't you want Laws of Human Nature? Look, Laws of Human Nature wasn't a bad book, but it's idealistic. And compared to the rest, it just doesn't fit. I had it. I had thingamajig. I had. Uh, uh, I just said it. Laws of Human Nature, but I gave it to Watson. I did a show with Rollable on uh, Laws of Human Nature. It's on my channel. Go, go look that up. Okay, breathe. Don't die. Whew. Don't die on me, kid. You have a long life ahead of you. <laughs> okay. Many men today. There we go. You really shouldn't worry about upsetting her. She's a woman. She gets upset. And surely, as the sun rises in the east, what you have to worry about is turning into someone she doesn't respect. And patronizing her because you are afraid of her emotional state is the fastest path to losing that respect. Look, what? I've said that before. Like, don't be afraid to rock the boat. Every now and then when things are going well, just look at her and be like, oh, you seem peaceful. Would be a shame if someone messed that up. And you just start something. You know, like a good healthy person would do. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, when contemplating why we now have over 70% of women who initiate no-fault divorces, 70% of the divorces are initiated by women. That's something else. Not 70% of women. Okay? Wait, or did he phrase it right? When contemplating why we now have over 70% of women who initiate no fault divorce. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. I would have phrased it differently, but it does mean the same. There's much more to it than simply because all women are greedy, slutty, or adulterous, simply because that is the nature of modern Western women. Thank you, Mr. Libertarian. Oh, yeah, Pride Month is coming up, isn't it? Um, yes, there are most certain a segment of the female gender that is in fact materialistic gold digging manipulators, but I don't think it's quite a stretch to simply say that the 70% of women that initiate their divorces do so because of a greedy materialistic nature. No, you have to account for the social engineering of our brave new world order on both genders into account 
When trying to understand just why so many women change for the worse by getting bitchy, nagging, fat, and absolutely contemptuous of their husbands after they get married, and why men that used to be bold, assertive, and confident when they were dating fall into the relationship dynamic when where they are pussy whipped, cowed, and beaten wins, whips. Absolutely crushed under a domina- domineering harridan of a wife. Imagine five foot. What is it? Five. Um, one seventy pound harlot. It's like really, but I mean, and I, I see this almost every day. Just look at how the average man looks. Are we really surprised? Are we really? Oh, 50% of marriages fall apart. Oh, 50% of the world population is obese. It's not a Western world, I believe. We're all, we can almost say that 50% of the Western population is obese. And you wonder why. It's like, come on. She needs to love me for who I am. She won't. You need to be Jack Tan, the juiciest fuck. Oh, that, that would have come out way better. Fuck. No, nope, I can do better. But not today. Not today. What do we? What do we say to the god of death? Not today. We have jobs now. I think the right women will play, and they do. Like the right women will play when they're into you. Should I go? Let's see. Uh, got a lot done last week on the Daily Driver. Oh, nice. Trying to keep the momentum up somewhat. Might head to the junkyard. Nice. That's pretty dope. I used to live next to like a uh, used car salesman. And he had a huge train full of old cars. I thought it was great. Robert Frank detective. Yeah, my voice isn't that heavy today. Maybe. Maybe. I should just do it like this. Go full worse than ASMR. You know? And ask the chat very kindly if they're done. So. Mm -hmm. In short, it's nothing more than a blue pill overdose. Taking the red pill will open your eyes to the real... Who knows that song? Um... Guano Apes. Is that Open Your Eyes? Is the song called like that? Yeah, Guano Apes, Open Your Eyes. It's pretty cool. It's like, it's that weird 90s sound of they're trying to do a little bit of hip hop with rock, but not fully. And drums are like semi-complicated. It's a pretty cool song. I've been getting way more into music again. I just love it. I miss drumming, but okay. Back to the most important part. By God, man, you already have rights. Stay away. For the people who don't know, by the way, that is a South Park reference. Uh, Taking the red pill will open your eyes to the reality of the female sex drive and how its basis on the principle of hypergamy dictates her behavior. Don't worry about hypergamy. Just worry to get into the gym and be cool and do awesome shit and have some experience, you know? Like, you don't need to sleep with all of them. But just go on dates. Learn to talk to people. I've said this before. If you can't open the old timer at the register, don't try and even talk to hot women. It provides a solid understanding of exactly why women on an instinctual level require men to be the dominant leaders in the relationship. Whenever a man fails to fulfill that role, the relationship begins its death spiral towards oblivion. Attraction is not an intellectual vocation. Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, Crowder. This is why marriage counseling usually doesn't work. No shit. 
no matter how many logistical, logical, sorry, logical reasons there are for women to be happy in our marriage, if she has that visceral contempt for the man that turned into a beta in the marriage bed and impregnated her with his inferior seed, Jesus, she cannot control how she feels about that. It, like, that's kind of like a movie title. Like, this summer, Sigourney Weaver got impregnated by inferior seed. Alien, part five. <laughs> she cannot control how she feels about that. Because by him becoming beta, she only feels disgusting contempt for him in her gut. It's like a chest burster. This epidemic of blue pill delusional that doesn't recognize this basic understanding of female attraction is why I believe so many women turn into the proverbial psycho ex-wife. Yeah, you don't want her to become the psycho ex-wife. You want her to become the psycho groupie cocaine crazy. It's women's basic biological nature to seek dominant genes for her offspring. Yet too many men bait uh, eyes when they get married. Yeah, it's the death by a thousand, a thousand concessions. And Carl used to call it the betafication by a thousand concessions. Um, submit to their wives as their authority figure. And even if she thinks it's perfectly fine to be the dominant one, that she is just exercising equality. Her basic instinct is to, ha is to have utter contempt for a man that she can rule. So it basically comes down to, first of all, don't be afraid of your wife, which is absolutely like dumb. I went to church a long time ago, and I remember there was this one guy, one guy who mentioned, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that because otherwise my wife will get pissed. To which I said, so... He's like, well, I have to sleep on the couch if she gets angry. To which I asked, who paid for the damn bed? To which he responded, well, I did. Well, she better be thankful then. Oh, but, huh. I, I'm like, who bought the house? He's like, I did. Well, better start paying rent then. He just looked at me completely shocked, like, oh, my God. What did he say? It's like, Jesus, come on, man. Come on. Like, I can't say that. Otherwise, she'll be angry at me. Well, let her be angry. Have fun sleeping in the fucking doghouse. It's my bed. Hey, 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 hey. You can't mean that. Yes, I can. I'll bring you there. You want to roam free or do you want to leave? I can do both. <laughs> and then I'll bet you, I guarantee you, if you say that, like, with a shitting grin, she'll probably be like, oh, my God, this man, this man. I cannot win with him. I hate him, but love him. I want to hit him. I want to kiss him. Ah, shit. <laughs> and then you win. Nothing makes me angrier than when guys come into my store, can't buy something because their wife won't let them. Oh, Jesus Christ. I hate that in the Lego community where it's like, oh, no, the new UCS dropped. And then they pretend to, like... um bought it in secret because otherwise wifey poo won't mind wifey poo would like be angry i'm like i paid for this myself did i ever tell you the story i can tell this story for you i think can i it's a funny story so this goes back to 2009 2010 a long time ago 13 years ago when i was a very young napier not even better looking though but uh i praat nu even in nederland omdat een bepaald iemand buist het en die vindt dat leuk was she i was dating somebody and she wanted to go on holiday now i'm not a big traveler or whatever I was like, sure. So I saved up all this money. I saved up a grand or something 
Turned out, like, all these years later, I went to London on my own and didn't spend even close to that. But okay. And uh, Lego Pirates of the Caribbean came out. And uh, Blackbeard Ship. Blackbeard Ship. The um, Queen's Anne's Revenge came out. And I wanted that. So I've been saving up money left and right. And I was like, well, if you go on holiday in three months, I can easily buy that ship. She lost it. And I lost it. You can't buy Legos anymore. And blah, 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 this. And we're going on holiday. And I can just imagine what will happen. That we get there. And you don't have enough money. And blah, 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 blah. Now, of course, it wasn't about the money. It was me being kind of sad about all of it because I didn't even want to go on holiday and I think she just knew where she just knew I didn't want to go like I wanted to break up months earlier but I didn't have the balls such a pussy back then I was now I'd be like bye and post that ship on social media so what I did she was like being a bitch again or I was messing up I can't remember one of the two they, they mostly went in line and I bought it. I bought the Queen's Anne's Revenge. And my friends came over. And I had it on top of the closet. There she stood. The Queen's Anne's Revenge. Beautiful Lego ship. Beautiful details. Really. It's a shame I sold it. But when everything is back in order, I will buy it again. And I will make a review out of it. I can tell you that much. Maybe I have someone to build it with by then. But they look at that thing. And they look at me and they go, does she know? Like, she doesn't have to. Understood. At that point, we already had a break. A week later, whatever. Broke up. A week after that, she was sleeping with somebody else because that's what women do. And I look at my friends, I go, still got my ship. Still got my ship. Eh? I see this as an absolute win. And it was. Go look that up. Queen's Hand for French. It is cool. All the skulls on the side and shit like that. Unfortunately, it has stickers. It's a bit of a shame, but it's fun. Um, aliens. <laughs> Special passage net. Yep. Oh, uh, they get opened by the old timer. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, what else? Got to check with the missus. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> Not you. Okay, all women but you and Kate. Kate wouldn't do that either. But I know you wouldn't. You're you're not like the other girls. You're special. You know that. Don't make me say it. Sometimes. Let's see. Where was I? Um, it's women's basic biological nature to seek dominant genes for her offspring. Yet too many be... We got this, right? Yeah. Um, okay. This is precisely why so many men seem dumbfounded that the sweet, loving girlfriend they married turned into an uncaring psychopath without a shred of mercy or decency in dragging him through the divorce court system and all of its... Vagaries. 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 And indignities. It inflicts. This occurs because for the most part, because both of them failed to follow their natural gender roles and the very nature of her sexual instinct, hypergamy, makes her regard him as a subhuman creature of utter contempt from outer space. <laughs> Sorry, had to do it. It is the very premise for the game routine that Roycey and other PUA call Mary Shag Kill. You have to understand why women have this curbled reaction to betas deep in their bones. If a man spills his seed in the wrong woman, no biggie. He can still bang other women and fulfill his genetic programming. If a woman gets her eggs polluted by the female seed of a beta, she's stuck for nine months and probably longer. Sigourney is. <laughs> Sorry. 
This is why there are so many cases of these women feel justified and entitled into getting most they can from a divorce settlement, even if she's the spouse that ended up breaking her marital vows. Beta contempt. Oh, we're almost there. By the time you are being taken to the cleaner, she is merely carrying through what the le oh, with the legally accepted means of playing the very real version of Mary Shag Kill, with you being the beta sap she killed. I've come to realize this is when I thought long and hard about almost all of the failed marriages and relationships that I know of throughout my life. I can think of no exceptions in the cases where the female ended the relationship. It always happened after the man no longer fulfilled the leadership role of her biological imperative requires. The cultural indoctrination of our brave new world order, the blue pill culture, encourages these relationship malfunctions in every conceivable way. Its memes and shibboleths are ceaselessly cease pushed by our mass media-driven popular culture to try and ensnare as many men and women to fall into this devious trap as possible. It is a population control agenda at its most subversive. To put it sequently, the blue pill encourages masculine behavior in women and feminine behavior in men. It encourages women to strive to hold all the power in a relationship dynamic and encourages men to cede that power to the woman. By promoting the ubiquitous culture of misandry and making everyone strive for the unobtainable goal of equality, they push men and women to act out in ways that are contrary to our natural gender roles, thereby affecting an epidemic of under <laughs> epidemic of betaization. I wanted to quote somebody else. Feminist lobbying for no vault divorce was the mechanism for the brave new world order to attack the nuclear family, to remake society by the first destroying its foundation, but it wouldn't have been nearly as effective if it were done without the social engineering that promotes contrary gender role behaviors, empowered women, and emasculated men. Oof. You can read the quote here. That means nothing if you guys generalize Sometimes we have to. It makes it easy. The exception does not make the norm. And you know that. And you know that. Um, you really come alive talking about, I do, I do. I mean, it's a lovely ship. Go look it up. Queen's Anne's Revenge. But with that, I leave you. Go check out all of Troy's books. Renegade Dating Blueprint right here. All 11 in one giant bundle. Go check the audiobooks out here. I have them. And I also have Carl from Black Label Logics, Gendernomics. And if you want to support the channel, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't. We're almost at 3K. Seriously, 35 people away. 35. But you can also click the join button, get access to Q&As, my version of the book of book, audiobook, and exercise performance course. Guys, thanks for being here today. I really enjoyed it. Sloth, Marty, Torsh, Kate, everybody. The new guys. Nombregenarico, one. Silver Bishop, John Watts. Muxaxa, 90. Thanks for being here. And I will catch you guys soon. Nico, you're right at the end. No problem, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.